In this video, we're going to look at how to take the airplane in the state we have it now and create molds to actually manufacture this vehicle. Uh, we've drawn it, or I have drawn it so far, without much concern for manufacturing. Uh, and you'll find that many of the decisions that look cool on this vehicle make it really, really, really difficult to actually build. So we're going to go through some of the simplifications you can uh, employ on aircraft to make them cheaper, faster, easier to manufacture, and, and really just make an overall uh, more utilitarian kind of purposeful result. But it will improve your understanding of how to turn your designs into molds, so we'll get right into it. So we'll first start by opening up this part by itself, the actual part that contains the outer mold line, but still it shows all the internals and stuff. And we don't really care about that. So I'll hide the solid bodies and turn the surface uh, back opaque. So at this point, this is a surfaced shell. In fact, if you want to really confirm that, you can go to a uh, cross-sectional cut. And you see there's, there's no thickness. This is completely hollow on the inside. It is watertight. And, well, this is just a cool tool. Every time you use it, I think it's pretty neat. So it lets you really see nice, cool cross-sections. But not the main point of today's video. It is about equally difficult to make it out of a, to make a mold out of a watertight surface or a solid body object. And in fact, you're only one operation between switching between those because if you have a watertight surface like this is, you should be able to go to the surfaces tab, uh, thicken. And if you try to thicken something that's watertight, you get the option to create solid from the enclosed volume. So instead of making a thick skin, you're actually gonna be filling the whole thing up with concrete essentially or whatever material you might wanna specify. And so now you see that thickened one is actually a solid body. So if we go back through and do a cross-sectional cut, then you actually see that it's a solid chunk of material. So really making a mold either way, you, you don't really care. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that thicken and just leave it as a surface. Uh, I guess personal preference is what it comes down to. But let's get right into the discussion. You have either top or bottom splits. You have left and right splits, or you could do some sort of weird non-planar parting line. In this vehicle, assuming that I wanted to preserve this nice blend that we spent so much time going between the wing and the fuselage, it wouldn't make much sense to do a left and right mold, and it wouldn't make much sense to split the fuselage separate from the wing, separate from the tail, the horizontal and vertical tails. You could certainly have a mold for each. That might be the easiest way to make parts, uh, you know, physically. But if you made the wing separate from the fuselage, then this whole blending is, just becomes down to probably someone applying a filled epoxy or some sort of uh, kind of spackle type material that's really more uh, aesthetic and unstructural and aerodynamic, but it's going to be kind of heavy. Uh, maybe it's not the most sophisticated way. So let's look first at what is required to do a mold top and bottom. See if we can actually use the leading edge of the wing, the trailing edge of the wing, and some other you know, zero angle line that exists in the fuselage and the horizontal tail to do a top bottom mold. Now ideally in this molding strategy, you would remove the vertical tail uh, and let the fuselage exist just by itself. And then you'd bond the vertical tail as a secondary operation, usually cutting a hole in the fuselage, inserting the vertical tail, gluing it in place, making sure there's a strong and robust structural connection uh, between the two objects. You don't want to just have the skin holding everything, everything. Uh, there are ways to make that work, but just make sure overall, if you're doing a secondary bond, that it stays plenty strong. Okay, so... There's a nice tab here called Mold Tools. If you don't have that on by default, which is not a default, you right-click on any one of these tabs, go down the list, and you should see Mold Tools. And these are specific, well, tools for molding in SOLIDWORKS, just as the name would imply. Uh, some of these are repeats, like Planar Surface exists in the Surfacing tab. Uh, ruled Surface exists elsewhere. So these are kind of just uh, repeated tools put on one tab for your convenience. Really over here on the right is where the molding sequence begins. So you'll find that our, our surface here is complicated enough that it doesn't work wonderfully, but we'll step through the process anyway. So I've made, I first clicked just insert mold folders. So we can close down surface bodies, close down solids. And we should see molded folders appear. I guess maybe it's within surface. Yeah, there we go. So cavity surface, core surface, and parting surface bodies. That's what that did. Parting lines is where things get a little bit interesting. So the first option is which way you want to pull the mold, which draft. So I want this to be a top bottom mold. So I'll select the top plane so that the normal vector of this top plane points up and down. And the next step will be to perform draft analysis, which it's targeting a draft angle of one degree. That's how far it is away from vertical. So this little uh, white gray vector will be the pure vertical direction. And then how far you are tilted away is how this draft analysis is going to be conducted. 
And interestingly enough, that doesn't seem to have been too successful. Oh boy. Abort, abort, close. Oh, well. Okay. Let's try that one more time. That probably was the main issue that I didn't have split faces selected. So I was trying to uh, take each individual surface element and choose whether it belongs to the top or bottom. If I wanted to automatically split faces, just select that. And draft analysis. Okay, there we go. That makes much more sense. So the only difference between this operation and last operation is that I enabled split faces. So now SolidWorks can go in and automatically split this uh, body shape between top and bottom elements. So now it's highlighting in green everything that belonged to the top surface of the mold and red everything that belonged to the bottom. And what it's doing is just from the very top perspective, you know, straight up and down on the vector we selected, it basically just finds out where the surface becomes tangent, splits the surface there, and then calls that the top or the bottom. So you can see every single thing we see from the top is green. Every single thing we can see from the bottom is red. And that kind of dictates which side of the mold it would belong to. But now we can start to see some of the complications this shape is generating for us. First of all, the vertical tail makes no sense to include in a top-bottom mold. If you're doing a poured mold, this might might be able to work. But think about how you'd physically connect this bottom red mold to that bottom. Also, if you had to machine these molds directly, how could you get a tool small enough and long enough to go down there and machine the vertical? Uh, like I said, the vertical in this in this circumstance, assume that's a secondary operation. Uh, but I. I guess I could go back and chop it off and seal the hole for the moment. Uh, that'd be pretty quick. But the other complication, the main one is, look at our trailing edge here as it meets the fuselage. So we have a big zigzag in the mold parting line. Ideally, what we would do is design an aircraft so that the trailing edge drops down and this point where it meets the fuselage would also match the parting line for the fuselage itself. So that way you have this kind of nice sharp edge that has a very easy top bottom differentiation would come into a single point right there where that red arrow originates. And then that would also be the continuation of that parting line all the way back into the fuselage. Now that's certainly possible, but given the incidents we mounted the wing at and assuming the aerodynamic team wants it to stay there, uh, you might not be able to achieve that in all circumstances. So just consider that by putting a nice blend and having a wing mounted at some weird angle, you might be making the molding process much, much, much more difficult to your, for yourself. Another comment worth noting. This is a direct side view, and it's worth seeing that the parting line is everything but planar. It starts out actually relatively flat up here in the front, which is just coincidence. The wing has dihedral, so the parting line goes up over the top of the airfoil, down below the midline, zigzags a bit, and then curves up in the back. This is a terrifyingly complicated parting line for a, for a beginner. For someone who's doing their first mold, this would be very complex. So anyway, let's approach those complexities to see uh, kind of where this rabbit hole goes. And you see that now we have additional surfaces that are generated. So if I hide the original surface file, you see we now have a, I guess the top is green and the bottom is red. So they've split that automatically for us into different surfaces. And there should be a parting line that exists. Uh, shut off surfaces in the next mold would be like if you had... Uh, if you're trying to mold a pipe or something, something that have open orifices, and you had to actually shut off an opening, that will help you automatically detect and close those off. In our circumstance, we shouldn't. It was a watertight model, should be fine. So let's go straight to parting surfaces. This is where you actually start to generate the flat surface that emanates out from your top and bottom mold. Um, and you'll see this is really the, the biggest headache, but key element to making molds work. So it's actually done a pretty good job here at first click. You see that the parting line emanates from the leading edge, uh, top and bottom uh, split. It emanates from the, the wing tip right there matching the airfoil shape. The trailing edge top bottom splits fine. The fuselage out front, this little flange looks fine. Now granted, it's only going out 1.1 uh, inches right now. If you made that larger, usually it breaks. Well, it technically worked, but you'll see later on that we're here in just a few minutes that uh, all these shapes and overlaps here are just terrifyingly broken but it's it's kind of working you can see the logic here that it's extending a surface for you that you can then blend out to a larger you know flat 
ish mold that you can then cut or blend or something else. But really, all of these back and forth, especially around the zigzag of the trailing edge, mating up with the fuselage here in the back, it's, uh, it's everything but clean. So let's take this back down to a reasonable length and go ahead and accept the process because this is what it can do for us automatically. Uh, the challenge will be left to the draftsman to clean this up and make it work. Let's see, is it not actually solving? Hmm, that's good. Also, you gotta have to love the very descriptive error of failed due to a geometric condition. Yes, thank you, SolidWorks. Everything in SolidWorks is a geometric condition. But anyway. Uh, one inch, 30 degrees, different smoothing options, but I don't think that really helps all that much. Let's see if it'll solve. No, in fact, you can see a gap right there. That's not good. Let's actually try narrower uh, length. See if this is happier. No. Okay. Let's try a different option there. Perpendicular to the pole direction. So that's good. This will keep it flat. So perpendicular to the pole direction means the surface will at all times remain perpendicular to, in our case, the pole direction was the top, the normal vector of the top plane. So these will always be flat surfaces. Let's see if that makes it better behaved. Come on, solve. No. Awesome. Tangent to surface. I generally don't like that one, but will it work? No. Like I said, this is not the mechanism I would actually want you to use generally. Uh, it is a tool that works very well if the surface is properly drawn and usually designed with the intent of becoming a mold. In fact, seeing where those loop over each other is probably one of the failure reasons. Normal to surface again. No, this isn't going to work out. So really, this is where some of those parting line difficulties start to bite. It breaks the default tools. So what you could do alternatively is actually go in and manually draw yourself a box around the surface that this will eventually become That would become the outer portion of your mold material. It's just a sketch that your parting line will eventually line up with. But see, you still have a very non-planar sketched region. You can, again, with a mold, just as you do with the airplane, have left and right halves. Uh, it'll be the same symmetric left and right. So if you get the parting line working on half of the airplane, you can just mirror it over to the other half, and it'll be just fine. But this is where the fact that it's everything but planar, everything but flat, really comes back to bite. Let's look if we can simplify this a bit, and I'll show you actually those tools working in, a, in one circumstance at least. Um, we can just grab the horizontal tail, perhaps. It's all built as one part, so... I think the easiest way to do this is going to be to do... to copy the surface by first clicking Offset... And select all the surfaces we want. Instead of offsetting the surface, what you'll actually be using this tool to do is just offset them by a distance of zero to copy those surfaces you care about. By making a copy of these surfaces, first of all, I guess I can delete these previous bodies that didn't work for us. So the parting line main mold still exists, and now we've offset those elevator surfaces. Uh, obviously, to make a mold out of this, we'd have to close that middle section. So most easily, you can do that by just doing a filled surface between this element and that edge. Hopefully, it will. That's interesting. It splits it out a lot. Okay. I get to show you Selection Manager. So right-click inside of here. Well, Selection Manager, I guess, doesn't show up for fill because it just it expects you to select a chain. Automatic chain selection? Nope. What you do, you just go around the whole boundary selecting the edges you want to fill in. I think it's gone all the way back. Yep. Here.
Okay. So you see the difficulty is these ed edges are actually split. So I don't want the surface, I want... All of them along a path. We should be able to see it collect all the points and see if there's a discontinuity that I'm missing. Yeah, right there. There it was. So, oh, there's actually a little gap. Oh, no. All right. Let's fix that gap first. Uh, knit surface, top, bottom, gap control, close. Yes. All right. So that should have sealed that up. Okay, it succeeded. That's good. This should make our process a bit easier. So now if we go back and do a filled surface and... Yeah, by the way, I'm leaving this in the video because this is the headache that becomes SolidWorks modeling. If everything works the first time you try it, then, you know, CAD is easy. It's always about overcoming problems, figuring out why tools don't work quite the way you want. And like most things with computers, it's usually the user's fault in the end, some way, somehow. Okay, hopefully this fill tool will be better behaved this time, but no promises. Let's see. I doubt it. Yeah, okay. Let's see what's going on now. And really all this is is just trying to seal this gap. Oh, right. I have to do selection manager. Treat all those as separate edges. I want them to be treated as the same edge. So that one. Okay, that's continuous. You can see it's moving those gray dots all the way down the list. Um, is there a little surface there? No. Okay, it's still continuous. Move the gray dot down. Continuous. Good. All right, so that's one edge. We accept that as one length. The other selection manager will do the other side. This is looking hopeful. Okay, still continuous. That's good and healthy. Say okay. It should be giving me a preview, which concerns me. Right. Well, that's fun. Okay, in the most basic form that works, I'll take it since it works. <laughs> so if we can join these two. I guess we'll just try doing it piece by piece, seeing which what's causing the issue. Apparently that. That uh well, we don't want surface body once selected. Wow, that's a unique failure style. I just don't even know why. Right. Okay, those are swapped, and we should have the ability to change the endpoints, but Okay. Notice I'm not even bothering with tangent continuity because this section of the mold would be cut off, essentially. This is just the part that's going to pass through the fuselage, so if you were actually going to make this part, this becomes scrap. Right, so what did I do last time to make that appear? Close, open... Yeah, that makes no sense. That's a bug. Okay, the last one. Let's see if we can get this part working now. So we don't the whole surface body. We want just this line. No. This line. And that one. Nope. Okay. Don't breathe. Don't move. It should be working. So now we just knit all these together. Uh, not the best way to do that, uh, but sometimes you have to take the way that works. All the gap controls set. Okay, at this point, that should be a watertight body, and that's something you draw a mold of. So now to demonstrate the mold tools working on something that has a planar parting line. Uh, I think so. It's angled down a little bit, but it should still be planar enough to function. We can go to mold tools, parting lines. Uh, pull direction will be top and bottom. We can perform 
draft analysis, which thankfully should be good to go. Now that's an interesting choice of split. What? <laughs> okay. So I can manually create a parting line. And honestly, this is usually what I have to end up doing to make these mold tools work, is kind of do a manual selection around it. It's nice in a way that you can choose whether you're like, for example, if it goes to the top or the bottom of the airfoil, if you have a preference. Overall, there we go. That should, that should finish the chain. We'll say, okay, so there's the parting line done. <coughs> now we can create a parting surface. So mold parameters, we can again go top plane. Uh, parting line should be down here in the list of items party line four okay so now it's emanating straight out of it instead of normal to surface perpendicular to pull will be my preference this one should work if it doesn't then we'll just punt and go try something else good it did so now with a more simplistically separated out part you see these mold tools work quite nicely they can emanate this nice little skirt around the edges and then still it's left to the the draftsman to extend this out to the edges of your mold tool. So that's where previously you saw on that more complex full airplane that I went in here and drew kind of this rectangular outline. So if I wanted to use a piece of material that was ultimately, yeah, 19 looked about right by, uh, we'll call that 13. That would be the material chunk that I'm gonna make this mold out of. I'm gonna delete these coincident points so I can slide that back and forth a little bit. Yeah, so that makes it, oh. One more. Good. Awesome. There we go. Undo that a bit. Okay, so deleted too many of those constraints. I think that is the one that was holding me to where I didn't want to be. Okay, well, close enough. I'm going to center that part more or less inside the material. So that way I'm left with a reasonably large flange all the way around. So you can put, you know, your vacuum bag material. You have plenty of places. If the epoxy rolls over, it's not going to get on the side of your mold. You want to have plenty of like tabletop space if you can view it that way. So now I'm actually going to extrude. We'll, we'll do a surface going up to a reasonable height. See if I can actually just select uh, up to surface. Can I select that one without it be properly bounded? I don't think that's going to work. No, definitely not. Up to point. Okay, fine. I'll do blind. And this is where your judgment just matches you. So this part is actually at an angle, which is not wonderful. So let me redo this in a better way. If I can make a custom plane that goes through three points defined by this skirt, then that plane is going to be more or less angled just as the part will be. And you can match to a very close extent that uh, the flatness of the parting line that exists. So we'll do a sketch on that plane. Same idea, a little rectangular thing to define our material. I'll try not to get it constrained in ways I don't want this time. Uh, that's looking a bit small in terms of outline, so there we go. By the way, I do like this center rectangle tool. You can choose different styles, but just that drop-down menu. There we go. So now this should be a much more reasonable thing to go after. In fact, for some other reasons, I'm going to add some points onto this sketch. One here in the middle for the dividing point. And then I see that I have a, a boundary there. There, I'm going to match the number of splits that exist in the parts. So this line I'm going to want to come out to about here. That one, actually pretty close to it. The next splits over here, I'm going to actually cover the edge from that one, this one to about here. 
So basically I'm just deciding how I want these to fan out in terms of attach points. So let's start doing exactly that. You can see this is involved. There's a lot that goes on. Subdivisions of sketches, so we'd have to divide that into separate lines. Okay, that's what we'll do. So instead of just having points on an existing line, I'm going to replace that whole box with just line segments, but separating them in a way that kind of matches the layout of the surfaced parts. In fact, I'm actually going to duplicate that one, mirror it straight over the center line. And if you're thinking, this seems like a lot of work, why in the world are you going through all this? You're right. It does seem like a lot of work. Uh, and there are easier ways to go about it if you design your parts for manufacturing. If you've drawn something up like I did with this plane that doesn't take into account any of the difficulties of making a molding parting line, then uh, yeah, it's going to be a headache to make. We'll cover the easier, easier methods second. All right, so there's a subset. I don't want to select chain. Selection manager, just this one, please. Okay, better. In fact, let's see if I can do this all the way around in one shot. Should be able to. But oftentimes when you think that in SolidWorks, it never actually works out. Okay, open group one, selection manager, start here with that one, this one, this one. Just continuing around, matching kind of the same pattern and style. We'll have to show all the connection curves, but really that could have been a lot worse. Okay. Sometimes things actually work. I say that, there's probably some giant error in here somewhere. So first thing I see is that this point right here, that control point, I probably want to move a bit. Uh oh, I broke it. I oh, yep, added a sketch, it shouldn't be there. Show all curvature combs, show all connectors. There we go. Yes. So now I can get active control over where that strong inflection point is carried out to the outer surface. Uh, this one seems to make sense. It automatically split that edge. Things are looking pretty good. I'm going to take that and then just do one operation of a trim. I'm going to use the right plane as a trim tool to keep this part of the surface and then mirror it across. Mirror face, right plane, feature to mirror, but not feature, body to mirror. That surface, okay. And that's different. Why is it different? It makes no sense, but okay. So since it's not a perfect, what's different is that this little cusp that little rounded corner is different from the left or the right hand side of the automatically generated parting line of the mold. In fact, now that you're seeing this, you're probably saying, well, you could totally just go from the outer line straight to the parting line of this simple part. And yeah, you're absolutely right. So I hope, I hope you start to identify simplifications because since this is slightly different in the automatically generated file, yep, you'll have to go there and patch that, which uh, you could, you don't even have to mirror it. You could repeat the operations I just showed for the other side. You do it all the way around at once. But just to make this work as it's shown, we should be able to do a little patch real quick. There, 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 there. It's trying, it's trying. Uh, I think there's a preview in there. We'll say okay. And okay, he was able to patch it. So at this point, you could finally go in and say knit, 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 knit. And then we need to select just the bottom surface of that wing, which would be set up by parting line. Hopefully we have that somewhere. Nope. 
Okay, so I'm going to hide all four of these for the moment. Regenerate the top and bottom split. I don't understand why it thinks it's just going to chop that off. Let's see if that's just a graphical mistake and we're otherwise happy. I'm not going to hold my breath for that. Nope. That's just poor. Okay. So in this case, what I will do is, again, just offset for the sake of duplicating. These surfaces make up the bottom. Since we already have that natural parting line, top to bottom, one, two, three, four, five. That's so the wingtips are stored in the bottom, zero inches offset, so we've duplicated it which means I can now hide this top element and everything you see here would become the bot would become the mold surface finally at long last so what you would do is lastly take this uh, sketch and went around the entire perimeter you'd extrude it down and make this into a solid at which point you, you can proceed forward okay we're so close I might as well do that so let's go ahead and show this top to bottom I'm very easily just go in here just for the sake, I could use the previous sketch, but I like to have solid edges, not discretized too much. Uh, we know that's flat. Oh, it's on the other parting plane. So actually, we can move that. So I edit sketch plane. So I'll set the sketch plane, because remember it was angled? There we go. Edit that sketch to make sure it still lines up perfectly. Constraints should have helped me. They did. Okay, exit without changes. Now you can extrude that. In the other direction. Let's make uh, the material about three inches thick. Actually, that's probably overkill for such a thin part. Two inches, maybe. Maybe even like an inch and a half. The problem with making this thinner and thinner and thinner is that your mold becomes uh, weaker and could distort over time. So you can say cap end actually close off the bottom, and that should be a big solid surface, which we can then knit everything, create a solid from it, and I think, lo and behold, finally, after all of that extra headache, you finally have a solid part, which you could save off and then go and make a mold from. Oh, except that, <laughs> except that I, I did the wrong direction. So see how that protrudes positively? That's not a female mold at all. Let's go back down to this extrude. If I just change the direction. There we go. Now it's a solid in the other way. Okay, good. Almost messed up the whole thing. Uh, those mistakes will happen. But now it is a female mold where you've preserved the surfaces you care about, which I'm highlighting in blue. So all of that work was just for those surfaces and creating a parting line so that the top and bottom molds can uh, be drawn from one another. Anyway, so this is, a, this is a chore. Having non-planar parting lines is an absolute headache. Uh, can it be done? Sure, we just went through it. Uh, is it easier to make the other side once you have one half done? Absolutely. Let's show you that. In fact, let me do a quick save just so I don't lose all this by chance. The way you do the other half most easily, now that you have one solid body, well, let me actually find where just the elevator exists. So I think this... Is the surface body for the elevator? Yes. So using that, I'll thicken this up to a solid. So now we have two solids. Yeah, two solids that we care about. So there's the mold surface and then the actual part sitting inside of it. And what we can do then to make the 
other side way easier is in the sketch plane that is angled as we need it to be, which I think was what, plane 9? Yeah. So we're sketching in plane, right, plane 9 right now, looking straight down. Let's do a sketch shape from corner to corner. Clicking accept, OK. And maybe you already see where I'm going with this. Let's actually do this in two directions. So it'll be an inch and a half tall, but in the other direction, let's just go about uh, 0.5 of an inch into the other material and make sure not to merge it. If you merge this with the other results, which I can do to show you what happens, it absorbs everything and you're back down to just one part. It's one big block of material. That's not the goal at all. However, if you say do not merge, then you're left with three parts showing, which is the bottom mold, the wing that's, <coughs> that's inside, and then the top mold that we're going to be subtracting out. That's exactly what we do next. So if you go to insert features, this is kind of in the insert menu, all these different features. That's like every operation in the game can be hidden in one of these menus. We go down to, it's kind of weird. You say combine, but then within combine is subtract. The main body will be this big chunk of material we have up top. And then we subtract from that the wing part itself and the bottom mold. Preview it. Looks pretty good. We'll say okay. It's got a little bit of overhang there to the side. So just select body one. Okay, so that now makes the matching corresponding top mold surface. So you see the difficulty isn't really doing all this work for the bottom and then doing it all again for the top. No. In fact, it's better if you use the exact same parting surface for the top and bottom molds, because if you see and see this to perfect accuracy, they would fit together without error. It's best to make your top mold from the bottom mold. So if we really show, well, that's a weird cut. If we showed both, okay, it was consumed. That's nice. I'll show you the other tool we can use to prevent that from happening. In this cut operation, it actually consumed those other bodies to make that happen. So delete that, go back in time. There is another tool called indent. Weird name, it took me a long time to find that the first time I needed to use it. But inside of indent, you check the cut box. And so you say, I want to indent the target body by these tool bodies, which will be the wing itself. Really, we have to click on them in there. That makes no sense. Select other, so it's a face. It's frustratingly not letting me pick multiple things at once, but you can do it in multiple operations if you have to. It left those other little very low thickness wings on the side. Indent. Target body the bottom. Now we can actually select the tool body we care about. cut okay so the indent tool leaves the bodies you make your source from so now thankfully after using the indent tool we have if I can hide the airfoil itself we have the bottom mold or whatever you want to call the bottom and top you have the two mold halves as different solid bodies which if you want to make a uh, you know, G code from, you can actually say uh, export that into a new part. We'll have a different video on that part though. So, this is the assortment of tools that you would need to push SolidWorks into making molds of any level of complicated piece. Could you go through this whole process making your own custom parting line, 
for the original airplane we started with? Absolutely. Would it be a headache? Definitely. Uh, especially as you try to figure out what to do with the zigzag of that back surface. It was such a complex parting line. The SolidWorks couldn't even pull it off by itself uh, with the built-in tools automatically. Not too surprising. That's that's not really a problem. SolidWorks is just a very complex shape to try to build. Um, so keep things simple. Don't make molds if you're going to do a molded par part or aircraft harder than they have to be unless you have a really, 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 really compelling reason to do so. Uh, even in this case, this part is so flat that it can be done in much easier ways. So, so let's look at that. If I wanted to make a part, make a wing that was way easier to mold, that saves you hours of time and headache and frustration, it's easier to machine, and everything top to bottom is just easier to do, let's do exactly that. So I on the right plane to actually do a sketch. Let me get out of this one. I'm going to make a simple wing. And we'll actually say insert tools blocks, maybe. Yeah, tools blocks, insert. Hopefully, I still have one saved on my desktop. Yeah, let's do uh, both could be done. Yeah, okay. We'll do the hard, more challenging one. Let's say you have a wing of 12 inch cord, zero degrees incidence. In fact, we could even. Well, for a molded part, you'd keep it at zero. You could still mount this on the fuselage at a different angle, but to make the mold, you'd want it flat. Okay, so to make this the easiest possible thing to build, let's keep everything flat level. 72-inch span. Just make a pure extrusion. That's pretty simple. This makes all of your ribs the same. This makes all the surfaces the same. Okay, so there's a solid. Let's go to the right-hand plane and define our parting line. Now, you'll find this is really, really challenging because all you have to do is do a straight line out the front a straight line out the back of whatever you know perimeter size you want to have. Say you want to have uh, six inches of working space on both sides. Okay, let's go ahead and define the bottom of our mold. And convert this bottom surface to an edge. Well, I, I, do I want to do it that way? Yeah, I'll do it that way. That sounds fine. Okay, so there's the mold shape, extrude 72 inches. Let's actually go the other way a bit. Let's, let's add some length on both sides. So if the front and back is six inches longer, let's actually take this to 78. We'll have the other extrusion distance six inches. Okay, so that's nice. So if we choose to make the wing a little bit longer, you could. You can make the extensions actually double that, 12 inches, and add another six to this will be 84. So that way, if you decided to add a couple inches of span to your mold, you can. And... Uh, well, that's insanely easy. Let's not merge it. There's your bottom mold. You want to do the same thing for the top mold? Okay. Now, could you use all the same mesh tools, mold tools? Yeah. But why? So unless you have some really compelling reason. I don't want to edit a sketch. I want a new sketch. Unless you have some really compelling reason to have a very oddly shaped, twisted, or changing wing don't in fact think about it you could even still have different airfoils from the root to the tip of the wing as long as the parting lines are still planar and that's not much more difficult to make the mold up the most challenging thing to do the biggest jump in difficulty for molding is whenever your parting line becomes non-planar then everything just really becomes much much more difficult so Oh, I didn't actually convert one thing. Okay. Oh, cancel, edit. I'm trying to talk and work at the same time, and obviously that didn't quite work out for me. So convert that top surface. Okay. Extrude that. Long way one way, turn it on the other direction. 34, no, that's a bit, or 84. That's way too much. 12 inches, okay. Oops, I left merge on. That's not good. It combined everything. So turn that off. So now you have your top mold, bottom mold, and you're done. That would be really, really, really easy to machine. In fact, it's faster to machine for some other reasons you'll, we'll touch on in the uh, cam code generation section. Now, is this a very boring wing? Yes. Is it uh, modified with different airfoils of the root and tip? Definitely not. So 
All right, we can show you how to do one of those if it's a little bit more complicated. Let's edit our base extrusion. In fact, we can delete that one. Uh, that's the airfoil at the root. Let's go to something more interesting at the tip. So let's do an offset plane from the right hand side. Uh, what semi span 36 inches? Sure. Good enough for our example. In this plane over here, let's put a sketch block in, not of the same E423, but of a 0006. Uh, let's do a little bit of taper. So you still have taper, it's 10 inches. Now this is a very thin airfoil, but notice we're not gonna put in dihedral. We're not going to put in any sort of wing twist. We really, really, to simplify this, want the leading edge and trailing edge parting points, if you'll consider it that way, to be planar. So you see like right now, if I line that up on the same plane as the root airfoil, that would be an easy mold to make. If I put it up here, okay, now you instantaneously had a non-planar mold. In fact, you can still have dihedral very easily in your mold, but it's much easier to cut it flat, bandsaw it down the middle of the mold, chamfer the edges, and then glue the mold actually to an angle. So you kind of do a, a, a post CNC operation on your molds that makes it way easier, way faster to manufacture. What uses way less material. There's just some of these tricks that you learn after you make a few parts that accelerate things a lot. So what if you put washout? So you say, say you determine you really, really, really need three degrees of washout at the wing tip to keep the plane from stalling in a very bad way. Okay. If you really need that, now the thing is you have a non-planar parting line. The leading edges could still line up if we keep the leading edge on the line, but there's no way to make the trailing edge line up as well if you have twists in the wing. It's not the most difficult parting line in the world to pull off, but you will have extra complication. Just like we did in the previous example of that horizontal tail, it, you have to go around a similar process to make the parting line work. So, if you really are having problems with the wingtip stalling, maybe look at changing the airfoil. Change the amount of camber in the wingtip. Uh, do some aerodynamic washout instead of geometric washout to make manufacturing easier. So anyway, let's keep this flat and I'll go through the remainder of the example showing a planar parting line with still variable geometry. So we'll say OK. I've, seems to have turned everything into construction lines. That's concerning. Let's we'll see if this works. Doubt it will. In fact, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to keep this solid. No reason to really go to a surface here. Loft between... Hmm. Yes, exactly. It's... In this sketch, it's turned it into construction. So I'll edit the block, right click here, turn it back to solid, right click here, turn it back to an actual ge geometric line, exit the blocks, e exit the sketch. This should work better now. Loft from that cross section to this cross section lines up, sounds good. Let's mirror that across the middle. Okay, so there's our wing. Epler 423 at the center, 0006 at the tip. Kind of a ridiculous combination of airfoils. I don't know why you would have that in a vehicle, but basically just showing you can have very different shapes. It's a planar parting line all the way around. <coughs> and I realize there's going to be one extra complication here. If I did a flat and an only a flat body, since the Epler 423 is under cambered on the bottom surface, there'd actually be a void there and the underneath. Ah, but I can do it on the top and everything's simple again. Okay, cool. The, I'll do the top mold first and then I'll subtract the top mold and the bottom mold from the prismatic material structure that I'll make for everything. And that will automatically capture the under camber by, through the Boolean operation. I don't have, to, don't have to worry about doing this really weird and awkward parting line. Cool, great, wonderful, let's do that. Right-handed plane, sketch, okay. Let's just keep this super simple and say I'm gonna lay out a square piece of mold material. My material would have to be, keep that easy, a fairly regular 20 inches there. And, and because of the Epler 423 is so cambered, it needs to be fairly tall. Probably get away with four. And I want this to pass through the trailing edge exactly. Center this up a bit better. Of course, you'd want to have some sort of dimension for your overhangs. 
four inches is pretty small. Uh, so I'll let the length be defined by the overhangs and not just some random number I made up. Six inches. Okay. That's looking reasonable. We will take that and extrude it all the way out both sides. So mid plane, 84 inches. That looks reasonable. Let's not merge it with anything. Okay. So at this point, we should be able to do an indent operation. So features, indent, target body is the big chunk of material, tool body is the wing. We want this to be a cut operation. And it's going to be weird to see, hopefully it'll let us select what output bodies we want to keep. Unfortunately, it seems to have kept them. Okay, good. It did separate them. Let's hide that body. We don't want that. Because you see, this is that uh, material that would have remained due to the under camber of the Epler 423 in the middle of the wing. That's the chunk of material we're talking about. Let's do a split. And I'll show you as we get into the middle. You see that little island patch that I was talking about? Let's say, okay. That's why the under camber was letting this extra chunk of material. This kind of, it's like a lake, right? Uh, the under camber performed this little pit. That lake of material remained. But okay, let's just disable it. I'll turn off this uh, cross-sectional view. And then now we're just one step away from having a fully completed mold, which on the right-hand side, we'll do a sketch where we create. Let's actually go defined by these other things. Make it bigger and then constrain it. That edge, and this one should be collinear. Total height of eight inches. Ah, that's a bit much. Seven inches. Keep in mind that you have to buy all the material that you're putting in your mold. So that the more volume you have, the more expensive it all becomes. Not a blind, but a mid plane. So it lines up the other material just fine. Do not merge because otherwise it'll just combine everything into one. And then lastly, we'll do this last indent tool. It'll be a cut operation. The target body being, uh, yeah, the big one. Tool body regions being that one. And I wish you could use selection manager to I mean, previously didn't let it work I'm selecting out of here, but maybe it will now. Nope. It, why won't it let me choose? That's interesting. It's the only tool I've seen in SolidWorks. It doesn't let you choose from the tree. Could you select others sometimes to go through, but it's not highlighting, so I don't know which one. Maybe I got lucky and picked the right thing. Let's see. So there's the top mold. If I hide that, we should see the wing sitting there. Okay. There's the wings body. If I hide that, we should see the bottom mold sitting there. And that's what we've got. So this is actually interesting that the bottom mold has this little piece that sticks up in the middle to properly form the under camber, the underside surface of Epler 423. So that is a fairly complex mold that lets you have control over stall characteristics across the wing. Oops, I think I unhid the wrong thing there. And now you have both solid bodies, which you can export into a different part uh, very easily to proceed on with cam generation. So really this is how I would suggest you approach molds uh, for, you know, kind of senior capstone operations. Keep it simple. I would really, really like 99% enthusiasm encourage you to keep every parting line planer. It just goes crazy difficult and crazy odd otherwise. You have a really, really compelling and driven reason to not have a planar parting line. It just makes everything so much easier. So anyway, that's my point. Uh, hopefully this video has been helpful, and I look forward to seeing the mold you make.